for some of the new ones. Nobody likes this one, but I love it. Because it has a stiff back. I like my office chair. <laughs> you want this one, Bob? This one doesn't creak. No, it's okay. Right. Your office chair is the biggest bag of shit in this building. I've had it for 12 years. Way bigger bag of shit than Shane. It's bad. I appreciate that. At least you're leading the category in something. Second place. Yep. I feel like this thing's never right anymore either. What are you doing I'm over there? I'm all off this morning. I don't What's know. What's going on? I don't know. You having a hard time? Do you need to talk about it? No, I'm good. You sure? Would you like to talk about it? Can, I'm here for your feelings. I'm here. Your thoughts. I will do anything <clears throat> but caress your testicles. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's what friends are for. Thank you. Seriously. I know. That's how it works. I feel like all like fidgety today. You look fidgety. I know. You look great in the new in the new Iron Man jacket. I love it. Thank you. Big fan of it. Took like a year to get in, I, but <laughs> I was gonna say it doesn't look like it's something that would fit my frame. It's uh it, there's not a whole lot of flex to it. Mm. No flex, huh? No, I don't think it's a training or working out type thing. It's just like I mean it looks like a showman jacket. It is for a showman. Yeah, mm-hmm. not me. I think you could wear it. I need things that are very functional. Mm-hmm. Maybe not so much because of my functionality, but just because of my awkward build. Mm-hmm. And dad stuff got to move with me. I've, I've, I've really realized that, yeah, see? It's not a bowling shirt. No. So, like, I learned that about button-ups, like, with going bowling. Like, if you don't got it in your lat, you're not bowling. I learned that when I was like 18 when I grew lats. Yeah. I didn't have them for like a really long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And then once you, you know, it's that part of just. And and it wasn't really lats. It was more fat. Just Uh, fat back then. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, similar in some ways. Mm Mm-hmm. But for me, the the whole dad thing has like, you know, the function, the dad functionality plays such a role in my life. I think it's because I'm a dad. Yeah. Like I dad pretty fucking hard. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it's, there's no more hiding it. Three fucking kids. I've had a kid since I was 22 years old. I feel like you're really getting into, like, the deeper, like, dad, like, habits and procedures. Oh, and <clears throat> Well, the more that, uh, the busier that we become, the more kids that I have, mm. um, the more dad I become. Mm. I think because it's like, <laughs> you know, as I get older, I realize that, like, uh, there's always that saying where you live in your 20s, you work in your 30s, and then you start making real money in your 40s. Mm-hmm. Well, I believe that I'm a little bit ahead of the curve now, and with how great my life is, that I'm not going to try and not be who I actually am. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm fucking, like, I'm nine inches of dad yeah. all the way in. Yeah, it's like, big. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that's some deep <laughs> shit we're talking there. Yeah. And, I mean, there's no reason for me to pull out and pr- try and pretend to be something I'm not, <clears throat> you know? Yep. And I think, uh, like, a lot of these uh, douchebag kids on the Internet that are super famous and all that, like, um, they're not dads. So I'm not going to try and be like them because their dads were probably, I don't know if they were cool, but their dads are the ones that help them put them in those positions, create opportunity for them. <laughs> their dads are my people, not the young kids that are in their late teens, early 20s, mid-20s that are just fucking off online, making millions of dollars, being complete fuck-offs. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to hand it to the dads. Like, good job, dude. You help create opportunity for your kiddos. They're killing it. I am hope you and mom are smashing ass in the fucking, in fucking Tahiti, living it up in a fucking... And a cabana. Like, yeah. I hope your kid's taking care of you. You know, that's the whole point of being a dad. That's the reason for the dad shoes, the jeans, the life, everything. So, yeah. But I, I yeah, it's, I can't not be this. So no. I'm not going to try. And it's not like that doesn't mean I'm like any less cool. No, I can't fight it. No, fuck no. Mm-hmm. I'll still wear my Gucci slides to take out the fucking trash. Yeah. I'll still go buy a fucking Lambo. <laughs> Get a blowjob in a Lambo in my dad's shoes. <laughs> yeah, I, but here's the thing. Like, I just like my truck. Oh, I just like, I'd rather, I'd rather fucking have a cool boat and go fishing 
I don't know. I love my truck. Yeah, yeah. I just, I need to, uh, I need to get a big vehicle though. I need to get like a big Tahoe or a Yukon or an XL or a Suburban. Yeah. I got to get one. There's no getting around it anymore. Zero getting around it. I think you should get a dually. Listen, I might get a dually. I watched a movie yesterday, Would and uh, Gerard, Gerard Butler was driving a fucking sick dually at the end of the movie. So what movie was this with him? It's a brand new movie. Brand new. Yeah. I'm a big Gerard Butler uh, fan. Uh, it's called uh, Greenland. Hmm, I haven't seen this. It just came out. Huh. It's like one of those like uh, at-home... Uh, an uh, at-home release? Yeah. Because of the Rona? Yeah. I thought it was one of the better at-home releases since the Rona. Pretty good fucking movie. Oh, boy. It's like a natural disaster movie. Oh, boy. And he drove a dually. At the end, yeah. The end. What was the brand? What do you think? Ram, huh? It was Ram. Fucking yeah, right. What color was it? Silver, like mm. yours. Yep. Uh, there's that dark charcoal dually down the road. There. It had sick black leather interior, though. Like, you know the brown leather of that... Uh, the Longhorn. The Longhorn. It was the same leather, but in black. Mm. I don't know if it was just for the movie. I've never seen that in person. I like every day driving my truck. I can't every day drive a fucking dually. You know how hard it is to get inside out of parking lots? I think when fucking night. I think it's just a learning curve, and then it's second I had, nature. I had the eight foot bed before my O three. Yeah, it was a fucking animal. <laughs> Adeline loved that truck. <laughs> she legitimately cried when I got rid of it. She's like, "Why are you getting rid of this truck? It was loud. It was ignorant. What color was it? White. Nice. The fucking huge work truck. Eight foot bed. It was yeah. awesome. It was a pain in the ass. But I mean, I whip that motherfucker around. I could. I would be able to put that trailer, fucking anywhere with that thing. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I love that shit. Yep. See, that's the shit that I get off on. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go pull a trailer with equipment on it. Let's go do work. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Drive home with a fucking ice cold pop, some pretzels. Yeah, and then go lift weights. <laughs> fucking right. My dick's hard. You are one simple man. <laughs> Bro, that shit legitimately fucking fires me up. Like, I think that's the coolest thing in the world. Like, that masculine fucking dumb shit. That's a thing right now is toxic masculinity. Yeah. Have you seen all this stuff? Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. It's like not, they want everyone to think it's not cool to be like really manly. Like, uh, think, like Ian Smith, like dude from fucking, uh, Belmar. Uh huh. Like he's fucking going crazy. Uh, and you know, we went out there, did the thing. It's great. And he's getting tons more support, more people coming. It's awesome. But he's been posting a lot about toxic masculinity. And I know that fucking what's his name in the dress on the cover of the Vanity, was it Vogue? Or uh, was it? You're Harry trendy. St Harry, Harry Styles. Yeah, he's yeah. in a dress yeah. and all that. Like, and, and then the whole toxic masculinity thing. Like, I haven't been up to date on it in a fucking month. Been a little busy with work and trying to make money and not trying. Uh, <laughs> but I was wondering... What the fuck is going on in the world? Like, because a lot of people are posting about it. I don't know. So it's not it, you, it's not cool to be a man because it's chauvinistic and a fucking you pig headed bastard. I don't get it. I don't pay attention to dumb shit. I, I'm I'm I haven't been paying attention. Yeah. Like so, you're telling me me fucking being all masculine and fucking testosterone raging like stiff dick titties trucks splitting wood. Building shit, well, thinking I, like loud trucks are cool. I mean, I saw that it was like a thing, like it was a headline, but I don't think anyone's actually like supporting it. Like they're just like putting it out there, like, hey, this is what people are saying, but no one's saying that. I don't know though, because of this fucking woke ass bullshit that everybody is. I don't know. Kim was really impressed when I operated the Caterpillar, like to mo remove snow. Absolutely. Because I don't, I don't operate machines. No, but when I you shouldn't, do, yeah, it's cool. But I did, and it fucking took me a while. Fired her up. Yeah, it fired her up. Yeah, damn right. So, like, it's not dead at my house. Like, no, I, I, I don't understand, like, why people think it's bad. Like, I mean, I understand that not everybody's like me. Or they, they, I understand that, but, like, why are you telling me that being a manly man is toxic? What's so toxic about it? You think I hate gays? Or you think I hate people that are feminine? You think I hate fucking beta males or something? No. I don't give a fuck. You do whatever you want. It's America. It's part of the fun. 
I just want to do cool shit my way. You think something else is cool? Cool, do it. Like, why the fuck is it such a hard thing to understand right now in society? Why is everybody having such a hard time that, like, you know, people can like two different things at the same time? Holy fucking shit. Groundbreaking. My God, you stupid <laughs> cocksuckers. I don't know, man. It's, it's so crazy that it has to be one way or the other. It's so crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, like, I, like we were just talking. I like being a dad. Like, cool. Like, these kids that are super famous on YouTube, like, I'd probably get along with their old mans. Mm-hmm. Probably their moms, too. Like, sweet tits. Buy mom fake tits? <laughs> Let's see them. Whip them bad boys out. <laughs> but, like, I don't understand why people cannot... Like, why, actually, I do know why. It's because society and they, media, everything is just trying to separate the people. Mm-hmm. They're doing a really good job. Yeah. It's Get crazy. It. They are on it, dude. They are doing a great job of separating people. I'm sitting here like, I don't understand why you can't, like, hey, look, my neighbor, like, I don't have many. <laughs> but, like, if your neighbor's gay and they're like, oh, well, well, you can't, you know, these toxic masculine dickheads. It's like, excuse me. Like, pretty sure that, like, he's had drinks with us, mm-hmm. great guy, mm-hmm. cleans his driveway, drives a sick ride, Yep. like, likes fresh craft beers. Like, you have other common, th- you have other things in common other than being straight and gay. Mm-hmm. Or just being not as masculine. Like, I like to split wood. Not every, like, masculine man likes to split wood. Mm-hmm. Some people think I'm fucking stupid for splitting it by hand. Kind of hurts my elbow now. I might have to actually get a fucking log splitter. Three hours of splitting wood beats it up a little bit. Can you just do like one, like one armed? I was actually doing it one arm for a minute. Yeah, and I realized that I'm going to hurt myself. What if you Not switch wood. sides? I do. Does yeah. that does that help? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're swinging an axe. Yeah. And it is dangerous. Mm-hmm. You get a bad swing on it, and it hits a shin. You're gonna fucking pay for it. I do that type of shit. Like, I've never swung an axe and hit myself, but, like, that's why I don't swing an axe often. You swing an axe a thousand times, you're going to hit yourself with it. <laughs> yeah. At least one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that's why you wear, you know, man jeans and... Uh-huh. You know, My Levi's. Yeah, a pair of fucking thick gloves yep. if you need to to hold on a little bit better. I saw a fellow got a fresh pair of Levi's in the Facebook group. Tagged me in it. Yeah? Yep. First pair? I don't think so. I think he's a veteran, but it ironically was the same ones I got. I'm not going to say works. I didn't influence that a little bit. No, <laughs> but this whole, but the whole toxic masculinity thing was like, uh, it, it it just continues to blow my mind because it's talked about a lot, and I don't understand why they would be attacking it. Like, do you want people? They want people to view it as a bad thing. Like, you need strong men. You need strong women, too. Mm-hmm. Like, you just need strong-willed, strong-minded people. I don't care if you, what you do is masculine or not. You need strong-minded people. You need you need everybody to make the fucking world go round. We, I mean, this is no... I'm not slighting anybody at this point, but you cannot have a bunch of beta men building the infrastructure of the country Mm -mm. it doesn't work like that that's not how that's not how that works so i don't understand why you would attack it because no matter if you are for masculinity or think it's toxic we need it Mm -hmm. to do things because super uber masculine men such as myself that like this type of stuff they're the ones that like build everything they're the ones that make sure buildings get built, bridges get built, homes get built. Like they're the ones playing in the poopy being plumbers. <laughs> like that's them. They're not beta men. No. But most of those masculine men like that, they're not very good at like tech stuff. They're typically not good at like book stuff such as accounting. Mm -hmm. So you're running your company. Possibly like a little shaky with like relationship building. Yes, probably. More likely like just fuck off and let me split wood. (laughs) Yeah. 
I don't want to hear shit for a little bit. Yeah. So listen, I'm really good at doing this. That's why most of the time, if they're a one or a two or a three man crew, their wives handle the books, the books, mm-hmm. the calls, the the paperwork, the relationships with customers. Yep. Things like that. Most of the time, that's most of the time. Not all the time, mm-hmm. but most of the time. So it takes everybody to make things happen. I don't understand. Everyone. Everyone. It's like a a group. It's like my fingers coming together to form a big fist. (laughs) Not just one fist. It's one fist. Two hands. (laughs) That was a good one. You like it? Yeah, that was fucking... Tractor beams. Right in. But, like, at the same time... I just, I, I'm just fucking astonished. Astonished. It's kind of fucked up. A little bit. I mean, when you step back and look at it, you're like, huh, if there was a way to fucking tear everybody apart, they'd be doing it this way. Like, you got these young kids being influenced by Harry Styles wearing a fucking dress. And these young kids are like, oh, Harry's doing it. I can, yeah, I won't. What? I don't understand it. I don't know. Like, I, I have a son. So we, we, we had talked about, like, you know, everybody, what's your son going to grow up to be? How's all this going to go? I don't know what he's going to grow up to become. I don't. We're going we're gonna to find out. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> along the way, starting at a very young age, he's going to be with me a lot. So more than likely, like he already is, he's in the gym. He's over at gymnastics every fucking day. He's in the gym. He's going to be around me driving a truck, splitting wood, taking care of the house, cutting grass, weed whacking, you name it, Mm -hmm. anything. Riding a quad, driving a side-by-side, shooting shit. He's going to be with me doing all of those things from a very young age. The chances of him liking those things are, are very strong. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty fucking strong. So the influence that I have upon him is going to be great. The influence that you have upon your children is great. However, just because he likes all this masculine shit, grows up to like it all, does not mean that he doesn't have feelings, doesn't mean that he can't think intellectually, doesn't mean that he can't expand to do many great things in this world. It just means he likes cool shit Hmm. that we think is cool. There's nothing wrong with it. I think the fact that, and then, and, and, uh, yeah. But again, I'll say this as well. Harry Styles wants to wear a fucking dress. Go wear a dress, bro. Just don't expect me to fucking like it. Just like I don't expect you to like splitting wood, bud. You come over to the house. You say, I invite someone over to the house for dinner. More than likely, you're eating fucking steak, potatoes, and Brussels sprouts. Mm-hmm. Probably drink a drink of bourbon. Yep. <laughs> we're, not have, we're probably not going to have anything else because I think steaks are great. Mm-hmm. Especially when I'm paying fucking $40 a pound for them from Alpine Butcher. Wagyu fire. That's what you're fucking eating. So, I, uh, yeah. It's America. You're supposed to do whatever the fuck you want from a good standpoint. Don't fuck with me and I won't fuck with you. Pretty simple, right? No wrong in thinking that way. Nope. Pretty easy code. Yeah. This is America. You can work as hard as you want and do as much as you want from a good standpoint. The second that you become a fucking piece of shit, many people won't like you. Things are changing. <clears throat> I like the country. I'm going to stay there. Yeah, it's nice out there. Yep, not moving anywhere. I ain't going towards the city. Mm-hmm. I did watch a crazy movie. Did I tell you guys that? No. That movie about the coronavirus? No. That songbird? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. It's on the, it's on the, I don't know if it's on the Netflix or, where I, we got it on the TV. It was right. like 20 bucks to rent. Look it up, Shane. What's it called? Probably Songbird. Not. It like came out it's about. Probably not uh, Netflix then. Huh? It's probably not on Netflix then. YouTube's. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it it um, yeah no, it didn't get good ratings, but it was about like 
you know, supposedly COVID, hmm. but like based on like. Oh, it's called immune to the COVID-23 virus. Yeah. COVID-23. It was like based upon that and everybody was actually quarantined. You weren't allowed to leave. Hmm. All kind of weird fucked up shit. Russian, huh? Hmm? Russian? It says initial. Oh, that initial release was in Russia on December 10th. Oh, uh, yeah. Michael Bay. Yeah. Was it good? Uh, I mean, it, it, it was just, it was something to watch. It wasn't super long, but it was uh, like, it was based upon being in the city, not being out in the country. And they tried to, they wanted to get out of the city and in the country, they were like, you could just go to the fucking, get out of there and pretended like nobody was out in the country. Uh. But like, I'm like, that's why I live in the country. Yeah. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Uh, unique movie. I like the country. Yep. Other than that, it was good. Mm. The Olympia was this weekend. Yeah. We didn't say good morning to everybody. I know. It was great. Good weekend. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the HWMF Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferrosi, here with my heterosexual Iron Man life mate, Bob. And our, uh, you know, <laughs> some days, but our esteemed colleague and IT specialization or junior, Shane. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. So, good morning. Good morning, class. <laughs> good morning. Uh, <clears throat> this weekend was the Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. It was quite the Mr. Olympia. Quite the Mr. Olympia. For everybody that did not did, that doesn't follow bodybuilding, um, there's a couple accounts that you could follow on YouTube to keep up with everything within the industry. Nick Strength and Power is uh, probably one of the better uh, journalistic channels. He just covers every day, makes a video every single day about bodybuilding, does great. Um, Fuad covers a ton of stuff on bodybuilding. Fuad Abiyad does a great job. Uh, who else was there? Else. Oh, on Instagram, really good channel that um, that covered all the uh, everything really well was buys and tries. Mm. They did great, great Instagram stories. They had somebody there; it was covering everything. It was awesome. But um, so that's how I kept up to date over the weekend was just watching all those. But uh, this was Phil Heath's comeback. Mm -hmm. Phil Heath was seven-time Mr. Olympia, known as the Gift. Um, in 2018, he lost the Mr. Olympia to. Uh, Sean Roden, uh, he had some uh, stomach issues where he had a hernia and his stomach was very distended and everybody, the bubble gut, and people went nuts and the internet was just eating him alive. And um, he ended up stepping away. He lost, quote unquote, for that reason, mm. for not being aesthetic and having too much stomach distension towards Sean Roden, who was just fucking on point aesthetics, out of control, looked incredible. Um, and then he took off 2019. Brandon Curry won. Mm -hmm. 2019 was kind of a uh, Sean Roden wasn't allowed to compete because of some legal issues that he's had. Uh, Phil Heath didn't compete just because he was getting his everything repaired and mm -hmm. stepping away. So Brandon Curry, Mr. Olympia 2019. This year, shit show with the Rona. Mm -hmm. Phil Heath came back. Big, Ra Big Rami, who has been Mr. I can never just put it all together but he got a special invitation because he wasn't able to compete anywhere, but got his visa to come over, was able to compete. And then Brandon Curry, um, he also competed as well. Mm -hmm. Big Rami won. Big Rami was 290 fucking pounds of insane mass. Shredded. Huge. Huge shredded man. Wild, wild, wild. Mm -hmm. So he's Mr. Olympia. Yes. Brandon Curry took second, and Phil Heath took third. Mm -hmm. um, Phil Heath almost lost to Hottie Chupon. Yeah. Hottie is uh, also fucking legitimately absolutely insane. Nuts. Lost by one point to him. Or he beat, he beat Hottie by one point, according to the scorecards and everything. But um, it was super intense, and watching it was, uh, I mean, bro, just bodybuilding is absolutely fucking insane. Yeah, I thought that there was quite a few new and different looks. Oh yeah, this year. If Rami continues to put it together 
and keeps looking like that, nobody's beating him for a while. Mm-hmm. Nobody's gonna if he continues to come in that condition, nobody's gonna beat him for a minute. Mm-hmm. It's gonna take it's gonna take a couple times. Brandon Curry is pretty fucking good, um, but I mean, bro, Brandon Curry did look wild, mm-hmm. looked incredible, but he just didn't have the same level of wow factor that big Rami did. Yeah. Um, conditioning wise, Rami was ahead of Brandon as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was Dexter's last Olympia. Dexter. I think he, dude, I think they said he competed at over 20 Olympias or some shit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was like, no fucking Isn't way. he like 51? Yeah, yeah, dude. He's 51. Holy shit. One in 08. So that was 12, 12 fucking years ago. He won the Mr. Olympia. 12 years ago, he was Mr. Olympia in 2008, and he's been competing since didn't, then as well. Didn't he have an awesome placing in the last couple of years there, too? Uh, last, pretty... I can't remember what he did last year, but he, dude, he's always in the mix. Yeah. Always in the mix. He took ninth this year. He was just, bro, he's 50 fucking one. Yeah. You're 50 fucking one. What are you doing still bodybuilding? That's insane mm-hmm. that, you're, that you're still top 10. Um, uh, Ian Vallette, uh, I can never. S- I don't know how to say it either. He's Canadian. Mm-hmm. He's fucking massive. Mm-hmm. Great showing. Um, I don't want to fuck his last name up. Valier. Yeah. So. Ian Valier. That's what I'm going to call him. He uh, he came out and took he took seventh. Mm-hmm. Bro, insane. Mm-hmm. Huge fan. Hard as nails. <laughs> massive. <laughs> Scary big. I want to see him in person. I never met him in person. Yeah. Yeah. He's married to Seabum's sister. So like Seabum. And C Bum and Courtney King, and then Melissa Bum, who's also a pro, and Ian. Like, that's quite the fucking crew there. Yeah. Sweet Jesus. A lot of, a lot of muscle. A lot of fucking muscle and Canadian beauty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you this, though. The most exciting part of the Mr. Olympia this weekend was uh, classic physique. Yeah. C Bum. For sure. Breon and uh, Terrence Ruffin. <laughs> Uh, that uh, to me, what those guys are in that category is what attracts me the most to bodybuilding, Mm -hmm. like the look, the posing, the whole nine, absolutely incredible. Chris Bumstead is fucking insane. Yep. Like it was wild. Just his whole presentation, the choice of posing fucking loved it. Breon and uh, Terrence Ruffin, Ruff Diesel on Instagram, unreal. Mm-hmm. Like those three guys, those top three guys, if you are a fan of bodybuilding, you have to be a fan of just watching them pose and display their physiques. Yeah, they, they made that division what it, what it is. It is, I mean, I'm, I don't understand how you cannot like enjoy watching it. Just because you know, like, put it this way. In bodybuilding, I believe that there's a level of suffer that makes you that much better, in, in, in all honesty. Whenever you see the death face, whenever you see the suffering, like that look in somebody, you're like, man, you are fucking, you're hurting so bad. you got to look nuts. <laughs> you got to have something under those clothes that's just going to blow people's minds. All Those three dudes all had it and all displayed their physiques in their own way that was just incredible. I don't give a fuck if it's one, two, three, who it is with those. I think Bubstead leads leads by a mile. But all three of those, like, you just, just go enjoy watching it. Follow them, watch them, and, I mean, bro, I love it. I think that that is the most exciting thing in bodybuilding right now. Like, I mean, I, I do love the open class, and I'm, I'm always going to be a fan of it. But just watching them display everything that they work for, the super tight waist, the long, deep lines of the, in their legs, in their muscles, their backs, fucking insane. It's all about presentation, and it's phenomenal. Huge fucking fan of it. Is there, is there like, a weight, a weight mm-hmm. class to that? Oh, yeah. So in classic physique, you have height-to-weight ratios. Like, if you're a certain height, you can only weigh so much. So that gotcha. way, it's all proportionary. So like if, pound like, for pound. Chris is, I think, 6'2". Mm-hmm. So I think he has, like, a 235-pound cutoff. Mm-hmm. If you're five foot seven, I think it's, like, 180 pounds. Got it. 
so that way you look proportionate. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know what I mean? Yep. And I, I think it's done really well. I think that um, tweaking a few pounds is going to be something that, that as that class, as that division continues to grow, that's what they're going to end up doing is tweaking the weights, mm-hmm. um, uh, especially for the, the, the shorter guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, but it was fucking incredible. I think that that to me is what I was most excited about watching. Mm-hmm. Fucking incredible. Because they're actually, they have to sculpt their physique pound by pound. They have to make each pound count. Mm-hmm. You add two pounds. If you have two pounds to add to your physique, you can't just add it on your legs. No, you have to add it proportionately to your body because you have a weight class to stay within. Yeah. So your training plays that much of a role. Your everything, like Bumstead needs needed to add a back. Pro back doubled in fucking size. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Some guys need to do just etch their legs better. Some go, and, and you have to understand that you can't just work out and expect to get better. You have to specifically choose certain exercises to make your physique look a certain way. If you need ham if you need better detail in your hamstrings, you can't just go fucking doing stiff legged deadlifts not expecting your hamstrings not to grow and add weight to your hamstrings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you choose big compound exercises, you're going to add muscle size because you're going to be eating more than likely. Like in, if your hamstrings get bigger and you put a couple pounds there and then a couple pounds on your back, like all of a sudden you might be out of your weight class. Mm-hmm. And then as you diet down, you might suffer in those certain areas. Yeah. So it's like they li- literally have to sculpt their physique pound by pound, exercise by exercise. So fucking fascinating to me. Find it incredible. Is like uh, is flexibility and mobility and those types of things a bigger deal? Absolutely for that class. I think so because of the posing. Yeah, that's what I mean. A it's very so classic. Fluid yeah, and, very classic esque, old yeah. school. Um, but I mean, bro. Those three dudes were absolutely fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. Shredded. Full. Like, they had it all. They All three of them fucking nailed it. Mm-hmm. It was nuts. And like I said, it's nothing against any other class. It's just what I'm most into myself personally right yeah, now. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. I just wish I was a little taller. So I could look like Chris Bumstead. <laughs> I feel like... Chris Bumstead and Courtney King. Uh, I feel like they're the couple that are walking down the road in Dumb and Dumber, and bumped into him. And you're like, and you're like Man, look, at, look the- at the buns on that one. He's like, he must work out. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the couple that yeah. we would see. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because they're both just they're both like, she was fucking Miss Bikini Olympia years ago. Mm-hmm. And he fucking Mr. Olympia classic physique. So I feel like it's just hand in hand. Super. Uh, I'm, I'm, I will say that I hope that, uh, I hope that Breon and uh, Rough Diesel, I hope they both don't lose their heads. Mm-hmm. Uh, keep their heads on about all this and continue to push because that class is made by the competition of those three. Mm-hmm. Um and they're all, I mean, Chris Bumstead and Breon were going back and forth because Breon was two-time Mr. Mr. O Classic Physique before Bumstead. So two Breon, two Bumstead. Um, and I think that that rivalry is awesome. I hope that they don't lose any, any like, uh, I hope nobody gets hard feelings about anything and continue to do this because they make that class incredible. Yeah. The whole entire, the whole everything about it. And don't forget, like, if uh, anybody – I don't know who gives advice to certain people. Like, I know because in my career I fucked up and lost my head and became a head case. But uh, Jay Cutler made a, a strong living off of being number two to Ronnie. Mm-hmm. And then he became Mr. Olympia. Um, uh, anybody that's competing, like Breon, uh, Terrence – Anybody that's in a number two or a back position and, and, or in not number one, let's put it that way, there is room for you to capitalize, make a ton of money, and do wonders for the sport and your career and the longevity. Just because you're not number one does not mean that you are not good, does not mean that you are not incredible, does not mean that you are not 
that people don't recognize your hard work and everything that you do. I think that you need to make sure that you keep on the forefront that there are a ton of people out there looking and searching for entertainment and worth by watching what you gentlemen do, because it's incredible. So someone like Jay Cutler, who made a living being number two, strong living, and then becoming number one, and still to this day, holding himself with like the utmost fucking professionalism, uh, has built many businesses, invested his money right, and invested into himself during his career for the longevity of after he's done competing. Mm -hmm. Do that. Connect with your fans. Show them parts of your life that are incredible. Talk about the things that you like. And put yourself out there because you're already putting yourself out there on the biggest stage in the fucking world. Mm -hmm. If you're putting yourself out there on the biggest stage of the world, don't be afraid to do it in your daily life for your fans to connect with you about so that you have longevity in this sport and industry after you're done competing. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of uh, – I mean, I lost my head. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Fuck. So I know, that I, know what, I know what it feels like. And it's not good. And if you don't have good guidance and you don't have people around you, if you just have yes people or people that are afraid to speak up and tell you to get your shit together, hey, dude, let's do this. Let's formulate a good plan. You have a ton of fans. You have a ton of people that support you. Don't get inside your head and let doubt creep in and fuck you all up. It's okay to lose. It's good to lose. Don't think that it's a bad thing. Because if you constantly think that losing is a bad thing, then you're going to be let down a lot in life. Because you don't win every single fucking day. You strive to, but you, all, you don't always. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that if you, follow, if you follow Bumstead, like, dude had great YouTube videos talking about what he's doing mentally. Like, like dude's in a whole nother, he's on a whole nother level mentally. Whole nother level. Because he had to be because he's up against guys that are just like him. Those are very select individuals that are doing that. Whenever we have our thing here with work, yeah, we're in a different world with work. That's why these companies are so incredibly successful, uber successful. People dream of doing what we're doing here. Same thing with watching him. People dream of doing what it is. So show them, tell them, open up. And if people don't like it or people don't see it, then we're gonna fuck them, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> but I will say that making sure that uh, no matter what place you took, don't get inside your head. There's always room for improvement. Don't let any haters online fuck you up. Don't let them make you feel inferior. Dude, everybody makes mistakes. It's just easy to call. It's easy to call bullshit on people that are putting themselves out there because mm -hmm. you're putting yourself out there on the biggest stage. Keep working. Keep making it entertaining. It's incredible. <clears throat> I think a lot of people forget that. There's a lot of people that get tied up, a lot of people that get tied up in the moment and focus on only one thing, because it's hard to focus on anything but competing when you're competing. Yeah. It's hard to focus on making money, mm -hmm. you know? Very difficult. Yeah, that, need, that needs to be the only priority to win and to compete at that level. It, it, it has to be. Mm -hmm. It has to be, but in your off time, you have to do your due diligence to find ways to market yourself to make more money. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, dude, think, looking back at it and thinking about it and understanding how business works now, fucking Cutler's a king. Yeah. Bro, he's a king of it. Bro, murdered shit. Traveled. I mean, right now you can't even do guest appearances shit, so it makes it tough. Bro did fucking 25 guest appearances a year. Oh, yeah. At fucking... at. Anywhere between three and ten grand a pop. <laughs> hustler. Fucking hustler, dude. Mm -hmm. He's an animal. Ah, big fan. Huge fan. Huge fan of him. Mm -hmm. He's a riot. He had a sweet suit on at the Olympia. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Look great up there, Jay. <laughs> he is the ambassador. Like, <laughs> fucking, he's like, I'm trendy as fuck. <laughs> fuck off, dude. <laughs> He's like, I know way more shit about fashion than anybody here. I know this shit. Fucking, you think it's easy to look this good all the time? Fuck yes. You. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's awesome. No, but it's good. 
You ready for Christmas? I think so. Yeah? yeah I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you, Shane? You ready for Christmas? Yeah, I did all my shopping yesterday. Did you? Yep. That's a fucking straight dad move there. Everyone got gift cards. Fuck off. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know what to get these people. It's supposed to be from the goddamn heart. You're supposed to think about it. I take did, time. I did take time. It's the most thoughtless gift on the planet. It is. A gift card. Yeah. Did you actually oh, put money me. on the gift cards? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. At least that's, that's positive. Yeah, that's there. You're not just giving out empty <laughs> gift cards that you stole from a sheet's fucking... I made sure they are activated. Yep. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, that's I f- did all mine in one that's shot. That's funny, though. Just What's giving somebody a deactivated... Yeah, just don't do that to your family. Like, do it to, like, your buddy at work. Like... <laughs> Here's a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. You're all fired up at the window. Yeah. Use it. Nope, this is not actually. There's actually nothing on here. You motherfucker. <laughs> You're so pissed. I would be furious. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry. Dropping no. stuff. I know. Yeah, I know. Yep. No, I'm ready. Yeah? Yep. I got a couple fire gifts for Hannah and the kids. I'm excited. Because they're. Th- I ha- so I have. So it's Emmy, Addie, Hannah. Mm-hmm. And I. Uh, like, you know, Santa Claus brings gifts for the kids, mm-hmm. and Emmy is curious. She's like, so what are you getting me? Like, what are you getting me? Because we're buying gifts for everybody, you know, Granny Pappy. Everybody's getting gifts. What are you getting me? And I'm like, I don't get you any gifts. Santa brings you your gifts. Mm-hmm. She's like, but, like, you're getting gifts for everyone else. And I'm like, Fuck you, kid. Like, don't ask me hard questions. <laughs> and uh, so, and then we were getting Hannah gifts, you know. So, you know, the kids and I get Hannah gifts. The kids and Hannah get me gifts. Yeah. So, um, and uh, I'm like, so I got to get something for them. So I got them all. All three got the same item. Mm-hmm. So they all get the same item of one. And then this weekend, I... Uh, I took cash out of my bag and decided to spend cash out of the bag too. So I bought a couple really, I bought one more gift for all three of them. So three gifts. So they each have two gifts from me and they're all the same. Nice. I don't want to say, cause Hannah listens to the podcast and it's going to be a surprise. Yeah. She's going to love it. It's going to be super cool. It's like the dad to my, my women thing. Yeah. Pretty cool. I like that. It's great. Yeah. I'm excited about that. <laughs> Hannah does everything else for the kiddos. Fucking all fire. We bought a, a ton of stuff for, for all the kids in our life this yeah. year. I, lo- I love that. I love that I can get, like, a ton of items for, like, 100 bucks. Yes. And it looked like a huge... And then they get older, and then, it like, it shrinks. The pile shrinks because everything doubles in price. Yep. But, like, I, I love buying for your kids and Oh, yeah. My so nephew. you gave uh, SJ his weight set, his first weight set. <laughs> yeah. He- Fucking loves the weight set. Shaker bottle, dumbbell, kettlebell, kettlebell, and a headband. And a headband. Listen, dude. does that does that fit his head? Emmy he had to stretch it out. No way. Bro, she put Seriously, it on, she put it on. It's like around the top of his head. She's like, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. I'm like, it needs stretched out. And she's like, stretched it out. And then he puts it on. And it's like, oh, it, she's like, it fits perfect now. <laughs> Fucking dying. His head's, I believe, his head. We just went to the six month checkup. He's in the 68th and 63rd percentile for height and weight, so mm-hmm. still above average. Uh, and then his head is like 89th percentile. Nice. Big, big old fucking melon. Big head. Yeah. Big yeah, brain. I don't know. I think so. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it, kiddos. They fucking adapt and they're like sponges. Mm hmm. Soak it all up. Anything within the first few years of their life, within the first, like, I will say that uh, from what I've been able to look at, I believe within the first, like, seven, eight, nine years of a kid's life really determines their, like, how they're going. Because Adeline, like, watching her, my nephews watching them, and Emmy and how how different she is than, than Adeline and... Like, within those first years really, like, sets a precedence for, I believe, their their thought process future. I mean, that makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because Adeline did not have too much of an imagination as a child. She was just a doer. Yeah. She just fucking climbed trees, did shit, rode bikes, fucked off, no fear, climb a fence, climb a tree, jump the fuck out of it. Like, let's go. 
Emmy is straight imagination. And w what Adeline has become, she's no fear, fuck you, intense, do her work, do shit, like, like that mentality of me, because she was around me when I was competing back then. So that whole intensity of that is, is her to a T. Yeah. And then Emmy's, like, misimagination. So I'm very curious to see what happens to her within the next few years to see if it, how it's going to play out. Yeah. But... Um, I don't know where I was going with that other one. I don't know. I just got off track. Yeah. Got excited about the kiddos. Yeah. But um, SJ loves his weight set, went nuts over the weekend. Kids thought it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like they'll roll the dumbo at him and he just starts freaking out. <laughs> Loses it. <laughs> he just knows. He, oh, he fucking loves it. Yeah. I need a headband, by the way. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll if he on has that. one, I got to get one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Fucking sick. Yeah. Yep. Shane, would you get Alexis gift card? Nope. No, I actually got her some. Okay, some that's a good job. Yeah, thanks. I'm very glad you did that. Yeah. Fuck. We uh, we exchanged I gifts already. I was just gonna bring up. <laughs> I was gonna bring up your fucking you. You uh, I had the perfect reason to do it. I'm gonna say that you might be the worst at gift giving, and not being able to not present gifts than anybody I've ever met. I just love it. It's you like, cannot, why would you wait to give someone something? Because it's Christmas. But why wait? They could be enjoying it this entire time. Because it's Christmas. What if it's a nice outfit? You want to wear it around Christmas. That's one thing. Or Not all of them. <laughs> I, think it, I think everything. I think everything. No, you it's... Guys, uh, you guys already exchanged gifts for well, Christmas. Well, yeah, the other day when we left work early because it was snowing so bad, I'm like, yeah. this is it. This is the white Christmas. This isn't going <laughs> to be here. So I got home. I'm like, hey, I'm like, babe, look at it out the window. Like everything was decorated real nice. I, I was home early from work. She was excited. I'm like, fuck it. I was like, this Christmas is our Christmas gifts. morning Let's right now. Go. Oh, yeah. my God. Yep. We went in and it was awesome. She's all for it, too. She wasn't like the day before she was giving me a ton of shit. She's like, oh, no, we're fucking waiting until we, we were going to do it. Like, yeah. You, you were driving home uh -huh. all fucking stoned up. You're yep. like. Fuck yeah, this is it. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> I can see it. And then I, I got in the front door and like we, we have a window right by our tree in the front room and we don't sit in the front room other than to open presents on Christmas. Uh -huh. So it was like, I'm like, look at this. I was like, there's no way it's going to fucking snow on Christmas. I was like, this is the day. This is it. Yep. I put like PJs on like I just came down like Christmas morning. <laughs> Did you really? I swear to God. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. That's great. Yep. Nice. <laughs> but yeah. Yep. But I got uh, overly excited about a few items that are very dad-esque. One being, I've needed new socks so fucking bad, and I didn't even know until I got a fresh pack, and I got overly excited. And, like, Kim was like, like, she'd hand me a present, and she knew it was, like, either underwear or socks, and she, like, she wasn't real excited. And I'm, like, I was, like, super, like, fired up about it. She's like, you're either lying really bad. She's like, or you're that fucking excited about your socks. I love socks. I'm like, I'm pretty pumped up about the socks. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. That's great. Yep. Dumped out a whole drawer of bad socks into the trash. New set is in. I'm, I'm ready for the next year. I love new socks. Yeah. I like new socks, new underwear. Mm -hmm. I like new pocket knife. I got fresh Adidas underwear. Yeah. Brand new ones. I, know. I think I yeah. got some coming too. Yep. Hannah asked me like a month ago. They have the fly on them too. Oh yeah, you like that, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, some of them don't have it on them. Uh -oh, I don't know no. why. Yeah, I think it's because um, people with large um, packages or doing certain activities, mm -hmm. they don't like that. Mm. Like me, I'm just the activity guy, not large package. Yeah. Like the activities, like I don't like the fly for for certain things because it'll find its way out of there. And I don't like that. Yeah, you don't want it falling out. No, uh-uh. Because, like, whenever... You know what it is? It's whenever my legs were stupid fucking big, like, I could not buy underwear. Mm. Had such a hard time with underwear. I used to wear, like, certain types of briefs because my legs were so goddamn big. Like, dude, back in the day, my fucking quads were massive. I remember. And, like, my dick would just fucking, dick and boss would always push up forward because they couldn't go between my legs. Uh -uh. They, 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 there was no way. You, like, they, they wouldn't get smashed because they couldn't even get down in there. Yeah. 
Like they were always perched up in front. <coughs> like hello. Like this. Like is, a presentation. Yes. Like, like here, here it you is. Are. Like here. Here you are. God damn it. So like no way because it would always find its way out. Mm. So then like that's where once I found the Adidas briefs, it came in huge. But then like they'd always ride up too far because yeah. like nothing will survive down there. The sizing one's a little different now. Oh, really? I found... Well, I sized down. I was I'm, gonna, all, well, I'm also half the man. I was going to say, fuck off. You can't... You, that's, you, you changed. Maybe, maybe they didn't change. You changed. Yeah, I changed. Yeah. You can't... Kim, wear Kim was, like, really pumped about it, though. Like, about the size down. She said everything looked like a nice package. Exciting. Yeah, I was pumped about it's it. Exciting. I walked around with them, like, just those on for a while. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? Like, I went down the stairs at them. What are you doing down there? Just checking. <laughs> Seeing how they fit. <laughs> Fuck off. This is such a real feeling. Like when, when they, they really like something, I'm like, Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking Well, this just goes back to that the masculinity thing. Like I don't know if like if it, what it is, but I think like like the whole big burly man thing is like real thing. Like, yeah, I'm in my underwear. Yeah, my dick's fucking I got a fucking good dick day going. I think it's a good dick day. Check this fucking dick out. I am impressed with myself. <laughs> if I'm impressed, I fucking know you're impressed because it always doesn't look like this. Yep. It's like a woman with her fucking having a great hair day. Just one of them days. When a woman is having a good hair day, everyone fucking knows it. Yep. Everyone does. Everything's on. She, You just see her. You see the hair. You're like, fuck, your hair looks great today. Look great right between my legs. Look at that hair. I got like a pull it. It's probably soft. Smells good. It's a good hair day. Yeah. That's what goes through my head. So when I'm having a good dick day, I can't just go around showing everybody. Mm -hmm. Can't be like, Bob, check out my dick. Right. Even though you'd probably be supportive. Yep. Same with Shane. Shane be like, great dick, dude. Yeah, really good job today. Really great. Mm -hmm. I have those often. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not bad. But, like, so whenever it happens at home, and she's the one that, she has to live with my dick forever. Yep. She gets one dick for the rest of her life. So when I'm on, I'm fucking showing it. Yep. Yeah, good dick day. Getting the same pick, the yep. same angle. Thick dick. Yep. Yep. Got to show it. It's a thing. It's important. Because I can't do the big, I can't do the big Who voluptuous else? hair thing yeah. like, uh, like women do. Yep. We don't get to do that. Mm -mm. So we have to show it to at least one person. Mm -hmm. And you got to show some confidence. Mm -hmm. Good dick days. Well, who doesn't like waking up with a good dick? It doesn't happen every morning. You're not just fucking, unless you're very blessed. Yeah. But. Even so, there's probably a better even, day with that. Yeah. You know? Even like, so, you wake up, you're like, fucking right, bud. Good morning. Fucking, yeah. <laughs> Looking good. Take your morning piss. <laughs> Damn, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm hopping back in bed. Fuck yeah. Hey. <laughs> Big stretch. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> the big stretch. Classic move. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you felt that in your back. Sorry. <laughs> no. I don't know. What is it? What is that? <laughs> oh, my God. Very true, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's, I, I like to think that she likes it. It's hers. Yeah. Can't how, just. How do we get to talking about this? I don't know. Oh, underwear for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. Play a role. What else did I get? Got some cool shit. Yeah. Got new, new Hoka's. New you're, running shoes. You're going to love them. Ugly, shitty. They're uglier than the ones I've had. Ugliest shoe on the planet. Man, you are chalking up the dad moves. Yep. Chalking them up. Yeah, lining them up. Got some warm, like some cold weather gear. Oh, nice. Yeah, another dad. That's move. not cheap. Fuck no. It's not cheap. That shit's expensive. Yep, like the layer, like layering items. Yeah. Fucking expensive. Oh yeah, like yeah. You, because you need because you can't chafe. No. Like not only does it have to be warm, but it also has to be like anti-chafe certain material, and I'm guessing that there is cheaper ones and more expensive ones, and pl that does play a role, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. There, there's. Certain styles that you like, I sweat too badly in. Like it doesn't breathe. Like it oh. keeps you warm, but then you sweat like crazy. Yeah, I don't like that. It no gets go. heavy, and you get cold eventually. Then there's this like thinner shit that is like so. Like for instance, Nike, 
dry fit long sleeve. There's like two different types. Yeah. One's $85 and one you can get for like 30. Yeah. There's a huge difference. Yes. Like the $85 ones, it breathes somehow. Yeah. Like I can dress in it. I'm warm running outside 30 degree weather. Don't sweat. Stays warm. A lot of the same things for guys that work outside in the yeah. cold, like lawn johns. Yep. Like you can't just go buy lawn johns, work outside, sweat because you're going to sweat because you're active, mm-hmm. and then like cool off and you will end up getting yourself into trouble. Yep. Like that was a big thing with safety about telling guys how to layer and what to layer with. Mm-hmm. Huge difference. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you get, Kim? Uh, got her some... Got a couple pairs of shoes. Like, yeah, her shoes are cheap. Like, like I don't know. She likes simple Vans, so that's like. Oh, okay. I got her Vans, and then she wanted Doc Martens, like the boots. <gasps> Doc Martens made a strong comeback. A huge comeback. Big comeback. I didn't think they were cool, and they were cool thirty years ago. I remember that. Actually, twenty years ago, they were fucking massive. Twenty-five years ago, Marilyn Manson, mm-hmm. that whole fucking thing was big as fuck because my sister had like twenty different fucking pair. Doc Martens were massive. Yep. And they kind of died out for a minute. And then I think, um, what's the chick's name? Uh, Billy Eilish. Eilish? Eilish. I don't fucking know. Kiss my ass. Billy Relish. Billy Relish. <laughs> Billy. You fucking boomer. <laughs> Billy... Come on, what do you think? Like, I'm actually, I don't, I don't know. All Sriracha. I know is Versace. <laughs> For fo- fo- Sachi. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, her. Yeah, another big deal. Yeah, She's got those. Oh, she got me this really cool. Uh, like she made me this like photo album of like all my Iron Man and, like pictures. Oh no shit! Like it's printed. Fuck yeah! Like bound, bo- like nice book. Oh no shit, dude! Like a magazine? Like a, it's like a hard cover. Okay. It's like this big. And then it has like pictures she took, Kenny took, the professional pictures from the race. Nice. Shit like before and after. Like pretty, pretty cool. F- it was sick. Like nice. one of my favorite gifts I've ever gotten. That's awesome. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Where are you gonna put it? I don't know. Like I wanna set up something nice like in my training room and have that Yeah. Everything set up. Good call. Yeah. Maybe one day you'll have many books. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, it's dated and has, like, the race on it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one thing that uh, um, I have a little re- little bit of regret about mm-hmm. is not having pictures of everything that has occurred in my life, my kids, all that shit. Like, we have it in digitally and, and stuff, like, on phones and yeah. SD cards, all that shit. But... Um, uh, my my grandfather has had, or I don't know who has them now, bro, fucking like 30 photo albums. Yeah. Like this thick mm-hmm. that, would, that lined his bookshelves of everything from years, yeah. years ago when he was, you know, whenever, I mean, everything from when he was in the army, like all my, my mom, whenever she was a kid, like all of them, like shit from the fucking... 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. It was Mm -hmm. pretty fucking cool. And I'm like, I really wish I had something like that because we always enjoyed looking back at it all. Mm -hmm. Be super cool. Yeah, it's it's different looking at it like. Yes. Because I have every single one of those pictures on here. Yeah. Yeah, It's just different having it in in front of you. That's what I mean. That's I I I think that. Super cool. I really wish that I did that. I mean, I still can go back and get some stuff. My parents were big with that. Really? Like growing up, we had, bro, every year of our lives had a fucking photo album. Like, every holiday, special event, birthday, like, there was a section in each book. Super cool. Boxes of fucking... Super cool. Yeah, my mom printed everything. Yeah. Yeah. She still hates not, like, that's not, like, the usual thing to do. Really? Yeah, she can't stand it. Like, she'll go print out her favorite pictures and shit, you know, at the little kiosk at Target or whatever. Uh-huh. But she hates that it's not like a thing like you take, like you put put a roll of film in the camera, you take pictures till it's full, and then you get to go develop it and like relive that. Man, yeah. You know? 
without seeing it like all the time like you're like oh yeah we took that six months ago at christmas Man. yeah i remember doing that all the time like mm-hmm. taking the disposable camera to like sam's yeah. club or yep. something yeah my mom was big on that we there was like a, a photo like place near our house like that's all they did there and uh, like they did in-house portraits yep. but then they printed everything you dropped the rolls of film off they did it in-house yeah. developed your shit i mean hannah and i did that when we went to jamaica yeah we took disposable cameras and just took pictures yeah half of them were fucking nightmares but <laughs> like blurry and fucking yeah everything but we had a lot of fun doing it, it was super cool we had those on our tables at our at our wedding disposables yeah like even though like they weren't even a thing again like, everyone had their phones still taking pictures it was cool to see like what happened at that table nice like especially like the tables that had like my aunts and uncles or my grandparents that don't have their phones out all the time like they used the shit out of them and got like cool stuff like really cool shit Man. yeah I definitely would have took a picture of my balls. But we we got those developed, and then I think we took that to like our on our honeymoon, and we looked at them then. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, good call. That's yeah. a cool thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, good times. Hell yeah! I'm excited for Christmas. Yeah, I am too. I'm excited to get gifts and give gifts. I got some pretty sick gifts. Mm-hmm. I'm pumped. Pumped to give them. It's cool, like, being yeah. around kids again. Like, just now that my, my sister has a kid, you and SJ, and uh, I don't know. It's just Christmas is way cooler being around it, even if they're not your own. It's, it's, fuck, yeah. yeah. Kids, are, kids are cool as fuck. They are a huge pain in the fucking ass. Mm-hmm. Huge pain in the ass. <laughs> but they are the greatest things in the world. This, is, this time of year is everything that you live for as a parent. You work really hard for it, make sure everything's great, make sure that you have the money to be able to do things. It's everything. Like, I mean, I grew up where we didn't get much all the time, like throughout the year. Yep. Same. And then on Christmas, it was a fucking free for all. Yeah. You know, my parents got fucking everything for us, but we didn't have to get everything like mm-hmm. leading into it, you know? Yep. That's how we were. <clears throat> but, you know, so cool i got really good kids though so i don't got nothing like worry about or complain about like they're fucking yeah like i i don't have to give adeline no shit about school Mm -hmm. like people are having a hard time with kids in school emmy school is a fucking nightmare that school that fucking school is a bag of shit horrible it has run so poorly since fucking rona like they have their heads they send fucking emails every week on how they're doing things now they change it every week I have to go fucking there. I have to go there after this and be like, listen, you fucking assholes pull, need to pull your heads out of the, out of the dirt. Like they just told us that they're going to do everything digitally. Okay. Cause nobody, they're not going back to school till the 26th of this, of uh, January. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, so we have to teach fucking six year olds from home like this whole time. And then they sent an email out stating that they would like things to be everything. We will not be handling, handing anything in via paper. Like everything will be digitally. Okay. Okay. So that's what we're doing. We just got an email yesterday or I don't know if it was yesterday, but Hannah showed me yesterday that Emmy's stuff was not handed in on Friday. She was, the teacher was at school on Friday and nothing was handed in. So in order to get the attendance, she has to have everything handed in. And I'm like, but the email stated everything's digitally. We'd be sending you pictures of what the fuck we've been doing like you asked for. So I'm like, what in the flying fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah, which one is it? Which one is it? They change it constantly. Like, you mean to tell me, like, I hired a goddamn tutor. Like... I hired a tutor. You guys are, you guys can't even keep in order how you want things done. And I'm supposed to just abide by the rules. Because of the snowstorm we got, we had to go, we had certain items to pick up, like their paper pan- packets. We were supposed to pick them up on Wednesday. Well, they canceled it because of the weather. Like you couldn't drive. Mm-hmm. So then they're like, you have a window on Friday from this time to this time. It was two hours. Hannah's like, I can't go there on Friday because. We had everything going on here with work. Yeah. So we couldn't go. And they're like, well, you're going to have to figure something out. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, 
I can't get there. You can't just cancel something on Wednesday and expect me to be able to be there on Friday. Mm -hmm. Like, there's shit to do. We have jobs and lives and work. Like, I, I was just, I'm fucking blown away. Fucking mess. Oh, my God, it's such a bag of shit. Such a bag of shit. Like, what a unnecessary stress, like, on the kids, For too. fucking six-year-olds. Yeah. I'm like, I just, uh, I'm just so, I'm so over it. I'm just like, you guys are complete fucking morons. You're all fucktards. Our education system is so fucked. Mm -hmm. It was disgusting. I'm beside myself. But Adeline's just like, yeah. She's like, it's a fucking joke. Like, Adeline, what are your grades? Let me see your grades. What are her grades always? I'm like, is it, how bad is it? And she's like, it's pretty fucking easy. I was like, why, why is it so easy? She's like, because they make it that way. How hard do you have to work? Huh. I got three out of ten. Mm -hmm. Back to that. She figured it out. Mm -hmm. She had a, she had a B in reading, and I was like, "Why do you have a B in reading? Are you doing nothing?" No, I'm like you. That needs to be an A. You no more excuses. Don't give me that shit. And then now it's an A, and I'm like, "Should have worked thirty percent more." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because she doesn't like it. Yeah. She just doesn't fucking like it. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I think that, I think that uh, this is, <clears throat> I think that what's occurring in the world is the great reset. I know people are throwing that around and all the terminology and it's weird for some people and that and this, but I think that's exactly what this is. They're resetting the so how society functions. 2021 is not going to be any better. This is, they're resetting everything. School, what we're learning about school right now, I think certain states are the test areas this isn't going to be reset in a couple of years. It's going to take many, maybe a decade or two. But what's occurring now is setting the precedence for what's going to occur because in certain states this is occurring, Pennsylvania being one of them. Other states aren't acting this way. Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Michigan, like they're shit shows because they're run by super democratic governors. So I believe that this is the experiment for what's occurring because otherwise – What's the reasoning? Yeah. What's the reasoning? There is none other than trialing, trialing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this is the great reset. They're resetting, they're going to reset the education system. They're resetting the economy. Mayor de Blasio, he just talked about the redistribu redistribution of wealth. Video said, talking about the redistribution of wealth. I'm like, that right there is the key term that every single American was afraid of hearing and they're changing how they he he said it fuck it let's pull it up that we need to profoundly change the distribution of resources uh, i like to say very bluntly our mission is to redistribute wealth a lot of people bristle at that phrase that is in fact the phrase we need to use we have been doing this work for seven years So, as the fear of every single American of the redistribution of wealth, and he's talking about it like he's, those are strong accolades. So they want to take your money and redistribute it their way. Whenever we as a business already get taxed over 40 fucking percent. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Millions of our tax dollars. Yep. Yeah, so... Um, I look at what, what's going on as, uh, as uh, they're, they're, they're seeing how this is going to operate in society. Mm -hmm. And I, we're going to see what happens. I'm not a fucking fan. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. I think it's a big bag of dicks. <laughs> I think kids are getting dumber. Have you seen the number of people that have gotten s severely overweight from no. the Rona? Mm -mm. A lot of people gained a lot of weight. A lot of kids being inactive, <laughs> sitting there. A fat society is, um, is an unhealthy society. And I don't care what anybody says, Big Pharma makes a ton of fucking money whenever we are unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So many issues have come up from this. It's crazy. Yeah, a ton of, ton of mental, uh, oh. mental health issues right now. I'm going to say that in, in my life and everyone's life. You yeah. Know what I mean, we all have, we're all, this is fucking with absolutely everybody. And I, yep. and again, that's what I believe was their goal. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, a ton of people, children, adults, older people, younger people, everybody is facing some type 
of mental anguish from what's occurring within the world. For sure. Yes. I will bet you that, uh, I mean, I've, we already, I don't know the real statistics, the hard statistics, but I bet you depression and anxiety medication is through the fucking roof. Mm -hmm. Through the roof. For sure. Opioid use, drug use, alcohol abuse, skyrocketing. For sure. Yep. Because this ain't this isn't good for anybody. Mm -hmm. I believe like there's no more pretending like uh, that's that's not this isn't an accident. It's not their goal. This is their goal. Yeah, for sure. Otherwise, it wouldn't be occurring like this. Uh, they're acting stupid. Politicians are acting dumb. They're not dumb. Mm -hmm. They're very smart. They're very manipulative. They're not dumb. This is their goal otherwise you would see them go to great lengths to make sure people were doing better they're not doing that because that's not their goal and any fucktard that believes that it's not but you're part of the issue so mm -hmm. tough it's killing me it is eating me up mm -hmm. uh, but other than that shane hey any fights this weekend um, this past weekend? Yeah. Yeah, I, there was the Thompson and Jeff Neal. I did not see it. I didn't look into it. Who won? Uh, Thompson won. Wonderboy Thompson. Yep. He, uh, I mean, it was a close matchup back and forth. I think he won, like, unanimous 29, 28 or something. Uh -huh. Or it was, like, 48 or 49, whatever I saw that they're calling for Thompson to fight Masvidal. Two, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. No? No, because Masvidal wants to fight Covington and get back to the title. Ma Masvidal wants to fight Covington? Yeah, I think that's the fight to make, too. Thompson's like, I mean, I know he's up there now. He wants to fight a top five. They were saying that he's the nicest motherfucker. He punched Jeff Neal in the face and then asked him if he was okay during the fight. No, he didn't. He punched him. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, fucking um, <laughs> Cormier was like, dude, you're nice, but just keep punching, man. Jesus. They said he's the nicest motherfucker in fighting. He is. And then Masvidal's the baddest motherfucker in fighting. So it'd be like, it'd be quite the, uh, quite the fight. Yeah. That, I mean, that card was okay. I didn't like it for betting. Um, Aldo won. Uh, Jose Aldo beat uh, the guy who beat uh, Sh Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh, okay. He beat uh, Vera, Marlon Vera. Yeah. He wants to fight TJ Dillashaw because his suspension's up. Who wants to fight Dillashaw? Uh, Jose Aldo. Nice. He wants to fight Dillashaw. I'm interested to see Dillashaw. I don't like him anymore just because of the fact that he... Did was, what he did? Yeah, he, that was a stupid mistake, but two-year suspension. Two years is a long time. It is a long time. I'm interested to see him come back and fight. I want to see what how he is shaped and his tactics and all that stuff, so... He's it's gonna be interesting. Guy. He is. Yeah. Can he fight a buck twenty five? Yeah, a buck twenty five and a buck thirty five. Yep. Man, that's light. He knocked Garber right out twice. Yeah. Then he lost to Cejudo. So I don't know. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, we'll see. And then Greg Hardy got TKO'd for the first time. <gasps> Did he? Yeah. yeah no he got, shit. He got TKO'd. Who'd he fight? Uh I forget the guy's name. Uh, no, big guy, like huge guy. I think he probably weighed like 260. Yeah, it was. Well, Greg Hardy's no bitch, though. No, he's not. How'd he TKO? Uh, I didn't watch the fight. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. But I watched uh, I watched the last three. So um, Aldo, Thompson, and um, I forget what the co main was, but mm. it was an okay card. Pettis won, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Man, he he's won. getting up there now. Yeah, he won by unanimous decision. He fought this dude, Murano. It was a close fight. It could have won either way. It might have been a pity win. Well, fucking, what's his name? Dana White said he's going to cut 60 fighters by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. It might be, it, it's going to be the older ones. Um, I thought if Aldo lost this fight, he would have got cut, I think. Really? He's he's a older. He's older. So is Thompson. Thompson's 37. What? Yeah, he doesn't look like it. He looks like he's 19. Yeah, he looks young. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. What do you think? You think that, I mean, I look much older than I am. Everybody thinks I'm in my 40s. Hmm. And then I get a lot of shit from people saying it's because of the steroid use. Now, the steroid use didn't help, but I think stress. I think stress does it way faster. I think stress does it way, way 
way more than fucking steroids. Do I look my age or do I look older? You look older. Like, yeah. how old do I look? It's the fucking stash, bro. Yeah. Your fucking stash, mm-hmm. like... I had a close call with it, trimming it up. Yeah. Like, like, do you see how it's, like, up a little bit higher? Like, usually it comes down a yeah, little bit yeah. more. Yeah, but it's still thick and voluptuous. I, like, came in on a weird angle and, like, fucked this side up. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I dropped, like, I kind of dropped the buzzer and it went and, like, took it off. I'm like, oh, no. I was like, this is it. Here it comes. <laughs> so, like, I went back and forth just, like, straightening it no, out. No, it looks good. It still, was, still thick, voluptuous. Yeah. Like a thick black woman's ass. Mm. It still looks great. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> great description of my mustache. I'm staring at it. <laughs> no, I think that's why you look older. Yeah. Shane, I, how I, old do I look? Be honest. 38. What? I don't know. No you said shit. older. No, I was going to say you were. I, was, uh, I Holy looked. Holy fuck, dude. I know. Fuck. That was, that was Well, mean. if you shave the stash, you look 28. He sounds like Adeline. Good. Mo- All right. Good I'll take one. it. Thanks. No, I think that you look like 34, 35 with okay. the stash. All right. Because you carry yourself, you carry yourself much more mature. Mm. So, I mean, I know you're what, 31? 32. You're 32? Yep. Oh, so you're not too far off from what that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. That'd be. 32. Yeah, are you 32? Yeah, 88. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Fuck, you get to that age and you just stop kind of giving a fuck. I legit forgot the other day. I thought I was 33. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This year felt like two. I feel like if I shave the beard off, I look much younger. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I can ever take this thing off. Like, I feel like it's going to be weird. Really weird. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it will definitely be weird because it's definitely a staple mm-hmm. on your face. It's like Dale Earnhardt shaving his off. Like, we just like, what happened? Yeah, but some people can carry both. Some people can do the facial hair, no facial hair. Um, I don't yeah, know. yeah. If I, I feel like if I shaved it off, I'd be, I'd look much younger. I don't know people, but most people think I'm in my forties. I'm thirty six now. It's also because I think, like, uh, I, I mean, fuck, I've had it. Like I said, I've had a kid since I was 22 years old. Mm-hmm. Fuck. It's a long fuck. I, my adult life does not know not having a child. 22, 23, because Adeline and I had birthdays around the same time. Mm-hmm. So, like, 23 years old, kid. 36 years old, another kid. <laughs> Fresh one. <laughs> fuck, what are you doing? So I think that so whenever people talk to me about my age, I'm like, fuck, dude. And then running these businesses like all of us, all four of us, you look at a picture of us whenever we started this all and you look at a picture of us two and a half years later, all of us look look much older. Yes. Like we don't look two and a half years older. We look about 10. No, I'm in better shape, but I look older like this Mm -hmm. right here. This whole thing. Right here? Yeah. Up top? Mm-mm. Much older. <laughs> Yesterday, Kim was like, she's like, are you getting sick? I'm like, no. I'm like, I feel fine. She's like, I was like, why? She's like, your eyes, they look like sick. And I looked, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I look rough right now. Fuck, I'm not high. I just. No, I'm just, I'm just fucking. hurting. Just beat. <laughs> fucking beat. Feel like stressed. a stress. Feel like my dick after uh, Vegas. Yep. God damn it. Fucking used and abused and. Beaten up and chafed bruised that's a lot of like the presidents like you see there before and after office those <laughs> yeah, pictures are yeah. fucking those are some of the most brutal before and obama's afters. was pretty bad so yeah. what i'm what i'm getting at is is i think that that's part of like i mean that is part of like being a business owner in life mm-hmm. that you can always see somebody that has has worked um and not from not from a physicality standpoint because everybody puts in a lot of work but whenever you own a, own your own business and like i mean I don't live stress-free. We don't live stress-free. We live very high-stressed environment. Like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like the stress that we have is on our shoulders for the company, the future of the company, our employees, the future of our employees. Like, I think about Shane in, in years from now. I think about everybody years from now because you invest everything here. So I don't live like, ah, fuck it, you know, company goes, it goes. No, we have many people here many people here who 
rely on it. So that stress, I mean, I feel it like, like sleeping three, four hours a night isn't because I'm like, oh, I'm so jovial and excited to wake up and do shit. It's kind of like, man, my body is doing some wild shit right now because it's the most stressful time of year. Mm -hmm. We still have built this company with no fucking loans, <laughs> no lines of credit. Bank hasn't given us a fucking thing. Yep. So that stress level, whenever things are, it's super intense. Building an eight-figure eight company with no fucking loans, bro, you guys got some fucking balls. Yeah, so and then I think that that's why I have such a respect for other business owners and the employees of those businesses that what they make they are because it takes everyone to make this world go round. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why I always say and what we build is being a hardworking motherfucker, taking pride in your craft and working as hard as you can Working, living, enjoying. And when you're a business owner, that fucking stress level is through the roof. Yeah. Super, super in intense. Because I did a lot of fucking steroids. I did a ton. And they did fuck me up. I still like them. Kind of like owning a business. <laughs> it fucks me up, but I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, and, and I think that... Um, uh, I know this uh, fucking past year has been insane for everybody, but I have not done enough living. Yeah. I haven't done enough living. I've done a whole lot of working, but I think the living aspect has taken a back seat because of the state of the country, the state of the world, not being able to go do crazy things that, that we enjoyed like Vegas and, and exotic vacations and all that. It's kind of like we in this office, it was like, oh, so we can't go do much. Let's just fucking work and build because there was a lot of people that needed us to excel. So we did. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, man, like, like a year and a half ago, I, this, is, this is fucking. Beat yeah, up. I was I was thinking about it over the week. Well, me and you talked about it Friday and it's it's like I've gotten so busy with work that my spare time or weekends like it's very limited. Mm -hmm. So even like my free time or my vacations or me and Kim plan something is still a plan. It's still a plan out like, oh yeah, two months from now, yeah, Kim, we can go do that. Well, three months from now we have this release, so this has to be in. Everything's getting scheduled out three, six, 12 months in advance. So like, I no longer, it's not that I don't look forward to waking up and enjoying the day, but like it's getting harder to do so because I project everything. Yes. And I'm, I'm already living like, oh, no, I'll have this break and I'll get to have some downtime in six months from now. And instead of like that, and, yeah. that is part of being an owner. Yeah, it's intense. That's part of being a manager. Mm -hmm. That's part of being higher in your category because more stress, more stress, more account, more responsibility, more accountability more money, like all that's there. That's how that works. And that's why as an owner, you get paid more. You know what I mean? Like, like that was a big thing. Like people are always saying like, oh, you know, I wish the CEO of a company would live off of their lowest paid employee salary. It's like motherfucker, they already did. Mm -hmm. Most of them already have. It's like, I would like other people to be able to sit in this position and make the decisions that a CEO makes based upon the betterment and the good of a company and its well-being for everybody internally yep. to make the right decisions because it's really difficult. That's why most businesses do not succeed mm -hmm. because yeah. it's super hard. Well, it's, it's, allevi it's alleviating a stressful part of my life. You know, me, me making more money and me being in the financial, financial position I'm in, it's alleviating a stressor in my life that a lot of people deal with. And I didn't fucking like it. I don't and like being fucking broke. Fuck no, dude. I, I went back in the hole to be able to come back on this side of the line. Yeah. And, and, if, and if I didn't, it would not allow me to stack an entire company's financial well-being and my employees' well-being on my back and on my shoulders. If I'm worried about myself, I can't care more about these people over here. And, and, that, and that's how it correlates. You know, a lot of other owners are bags of shit and it doesn't always work out that way. Single owner companies get caught up in, in the wrong shit. But fuck, dude, the four of us, like, I'll be damned if we don't do better for everyone else. And that's why having 
what we have here is so unique because we have multiple companies that do incredibly on incredible on their own, yep. let alone having a conglomerate, mm -hmm. like a, a, a group of them that are all doing incredibly well. Yep. So, and, and being able to, there, we all have our own set and stressors and what we do here and it's fucking wild, but mm -hmm. yeah, stress is a bitch. <sighs> It's fucking it's, you know what I you know what I like about so I uh, I was on the YouTube this weekend because of the Olympia and I watched certain channels and everything YouTube has a ton of young people on it mm -hmm. like massive numbers of young people okay and everybody has a voice now and now that I'm older and I've been through it all and seen all this shit I look and I'm like man like the whole natty or not thing is like a strong case online and I'm like the natty or not thing Oh, man, young people yeah. back on the bandwagon. Oh, this guy's fucking natty. Fuck him. Fuck that. Steroids are bad. Being a natty's a pussy. Like, going back and forth with it all. And all the review channels. Tons of reviews on if somebody's natty or not. And I'm like... They're reviewing people. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, we're back, to, we're back to the fucking natty or not thing. I'm like, I don't know. I was like, why do we even care? And then the viewers are young viewers that are very curious about it and they just like the whole shit talking thing amongst that and it's entertaining but then in reality like i don't give a fuck if you're natty like there's a ton of fake natties there's always been fake natties like wh who cares like if you don't like somebody for being fake natty then don't pay attention to them mm -hmm. don't give them the time of day don't you know just fuck it but the natty or not thing i'm like oh man i don't know like Come on. It's a big thing again. It is. It's huge. It's a big thing again. And then, like, uh, the effects of steroids. It's like there are so many things that I'm, uh, I want to say, and it, and, and it all boils down to, um, like, <laughs> you are in control of your own shit. Do your own thing. If, like, if you're natty, great do good job if you're not natty great do good job it's okay to not be natural it's okay to take shit and if people want to say you're not working hard for it that's fine too fuck them you live your way because at the end of the day everybody as you get older you're going to face new problems and you're going to face certain things and you're going to be like fuck me this is a tough spot like everybody that's not natural that takes gear like 95 percent of them great who gives a flying fuck i don't care yeah the other like and then there's oh man I'm, I'm running a million miles a minute right now the other thing is people that are talking about when's a good time to take steroids and this and that let me be very clear shane write this down when is the best time to take steroids when's the best time bob do you know the best time to take steroids Fucking never, you stupid motherfuckers. Steroids are bad. They will fuck you up. They're not good for you. Mm. They are going to chemically alter your body. That's the point of taking them. You take synthetic testosterone into your body, your natural production of testosterone shuts off. Bad thing. Everybody get it? Bad. Not that, good. Not good. Mm -mm. So that means when you take testosterone, your body is then like, hey, I don't need to make it anymore. So what happens is your balls go from a nice, thick, voluptuous sack. Your testicles, they begin to atrophy. Because your body is saying, I don't need to make testosterone anymore, I'm gonna shrink your balls. That's how that happens. There's a bunch more scientific shit going on. <laughs> Let's stay logical simple right now so then you stop taking test you stop injecting yourself okay mm -hmm. your body isn't just like hey nutsack turn back on let's start producing testosterone again everything that's going on doesn't just automatically turn on okay so you have chemically altered your body and now you're done with your cycle and you're like i don't know what to do i don't know why i'm depressed I don't know why I can't think straight. I don't know why my body's acting all funny. My dick doesn't work. My balls are smaller. What's going on? Well, dickhead, you took steroids. Steroids are bad. They're going to fuck you up. 
There's never a good time to take them. But they're fun. If you like it, who gives a fuck? Whenever you're done taking your cycle, you need to take other drugs to turn your body back on, to tell it to start producing testosterone again so you can get back to somewhat normalcy. Guess what? You will never be the same again. Never. <laughs> Hence, the decision that I made whenever I first started taking steroids, whenever I first started taking them, I knew all of these things were going to occur because I did my research. I said, I don't give a fuck. I want to be a pro bodybuilder. Seth, they're bad. I know they're bad. Seth, you're going to hurt yourself. I don't give a fuck. I want to be a pro bodybuilder. I love it. Let's do it. That's the problem with steroids. You're going to love them. They're going to make you feel like Superman. I like Superman drugs. So I knew that I was going to harm myself short term and long term. That was the risk I was willing to take. So then I learned the hard way about a whole lot of shit. So when is a good time to take steroids? Mm -mm. Every Never. good time. Everybody doing natty or not and, and watching and trying to understand. Guys, it doesn't matter if you're natty or not, okay? Just because someone is natty, great, that's commendable. I think it's actually probably a, a great decision. I think that the longer that you are natty and if you are lifetime, that's great. Do you expect me to be like, give you a fucking gold star for looking good naturally? No, I don't give a fuck. I know a ton of people that aren't natural that don't look fucking good. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what, it takes a certain amount of work. Are there genetic freaks? Fuck yeah. There's genetic freaks along with genetic freaks that take fucking steroids. It's cool. The whole point of the gym and of our fitness community is to have a positive influence upon each other. Whether you're wearing a fucking Iron Man, th Iron Man jacket, running Iron Man, or sitting here like a fucking former juiced up meathead, we still hang out. We still like lifting weights, talking about it, eating foods, yeah. burgers. Does not matter. This is supposed to be a positive, influential environment. And everybody that's making it one way or the other, you're a fucking cunt. This is supposed to be uplifting. There are supposed to be super overweight fat fucks that want to get in shape, see their pecker again, and lay pipe, feel good about themselves, be able to come into an environment that's inclusive. Stop being a judgmental cock. Be a good motherfucker. Let's do cool shit. Even if you do CrossFit. <laughs> it's supposed to be fun and positive. I don't, like, I don't like the negativity and the negative connotation with it all. Bro, if you want to take gear, go at it. Don't come crying to me whenever you're all fucked up, though. You did it. Do your research. There's so much out there. Tons of it out there. That doesn't just mean go to the forums. That means go to the forums. Read some shit on there. That means go to uh, medical journals. Go do some research there. Read about the things that you want to take. And then understand the side effects. Because the side effects are very, 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 very real. Super duper real. So real that, like, you're going you're gonna to feel them. <laughs> the side effects are more real. Than the effects. Than the effects. Yeah, yeah. Like your balls shrinking. Yeah. Oh, man. Or like you training like, like a pussy before and after them. Like, <laughs> you're going to look the same, too. But then your hormones are also going to be fucked up. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could take all the fucking shit in the world, but if you still train like a bitch and eat like a fat fuck, after you're done taking them, Bro, you're going to feel if, worse than you did previously. Yeah. You, you, you can, if you don't have your shit together before you start taking steroids, adding them in is going to, if, if you're not on point, it's going to make you more not on point. Yes. You're going to gain weight in the wrong places. You're going to eat like you think you're going to be utilizing all these calories and you weren't before. And then. Yes. But we all have that guy at the gym that's like, yes, I know he takes steroids. I know he does. He has not changed in 15 fucking years. Looks, looks the same. And it's kind of shitty. Yeah. And his face just keeps getting redder and redder as the years go on. Because yep. I know he eats like shit. Takes a thousand migs of test a week. I can tell when he's on trend because he gets more veiny. Yeah, that's it though. But then he looks worse in the face. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, man. It's tough. It's a serious decision. It, it, and, and that's the thing that uh, I've noticed with all these videos 
And again, they're all entertainment purposes. Like everything that all of these videos are being based on views and entertainment and viewership. And I get that. I'm not a fucking retard. I understand that. But you have to understand that the information that you are absorbing, the connotations that you are absorbing, the information is just like eating food. The videos that you watch and, the, and, and all the influences, like that's how you're going to perceive everything. What you're taking in is what you're going to put out. You know, you can't forget that. Like if you're watching negative driven judgmental videos, that's how you're going to comment. That's how you're going to think. You have to make sure that you're, you're, you're taking in a healthy dose of all the good shit as well. Make sure you got some humor. Make sure you got some positivity. Make sure you got some motivation. But don't lose your fucking edge, but don't be a cunt. You know what I mean? Like, you need to have that, that energy, but you got to understand, like, what type of energy you're putting out as well. Because yeah. if you're taking in a bunch of judgmental bullshit where it's, it's saying, like, fuck these videos, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, judging, 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 then that's what you're going to do. Like, you might not even be one that comments. You might just watch it, and then you might just judge constantly about it. It's like, man, fuck, hold on. Like, I even get caught up in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's easy to. Like, we're talking about it right now. But, like, you can't, you can't put yourself in that state of mind all the time. Mm -hmm. It's intense. I don't like the, judge, the judging thing. And, and whether, like, you're doing it for views or not, it's just part of it. I think that, um, I think that the natty or not is entertaining. I think that uh, I think that people need to understand that no matter what you do, like it's it's a decision that you make. It's for, it's for you. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care if somebody's on steroids or not. I don't give. F I don't. I I don't know. Like I just want people to do a good job. I want to see people. I just want to see people succeed. Yeah. I mean, I don't really give a fuck what you got going on in your life. I don't care if you're using like other drugs. Like if you don't, you're not affecting me and like we're cool and like you're a good person then like hey dude who am i to say that's bad or not yeah i mean it, that's a thing that you like why you choose the people that you have in your circle or not yeah like if you don't like somebody who takes steroids then okay that's fine then don't welcome them into your life if if w whatever you want to do like if somebody's if somebody's out there like i'm not inviting the dude that does fucking blow and hangs out with hookers all the time to my house it's just not happening. He's not coming over. Mm -hmm. What's he going to say? Oh, you don't like blowing hookers, so you fuck you, you dickhead. <laughs> but listen, I think it's funny. Yeah. I'll watch it. If I go to Vegas, I might be like, hey, where's Jimmy at? Let's go fucking see Jimmy and do entertain ourselves. You're not coming over for family dinner, okay, no, bud? No. And, this, and it's like it's uh, – but I'm not going to judge him, bro. Go live your life. Do your thing. But I'm, you're not – that's where you're going to stay. You're going to stay right there. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm gonna think it's funny, but um, yeah, yeah, it was big. Lot of lot of lot of young people on the YouTube, and, and it's. It, it, I, I I will say this: it is good because that means a lot of young people are into fitness. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there's so much uh, uh, available information to absorb that you need to make sure of what you're taking in, and what you're putting out, and your concepts stay fluent and and, and on a positive note. You can't forget why everybody came into the fitness uh, world, why they came in. They came in to make themselves better. Yeah. Whether it be mentally, physically, something brought them there, and we got to make sure that these people stay on the, uh, uh, on the straight path of like, okay, just because somebody doesn't like powerlifting doesn't mean that like you, you talk shit on it. Mm -hmm. Just because like the CrossFitters and how we make jokes about CrossFitting or whatever it is, Bro, everybody, there's bad motherfuckers in every genre. Like, you can bust balls, but don't be an asshole, you know? And uh, whether people take shit or not, it's up to them. Yep. I mean, if you want to talk about eating Andros, I'll tell you stories. I'm not eating Andros anymore. Mm -hmm. Do I want to every now and then? Yeah, it pops in my head. And I'm like, bad idea. Why? Because they're bad. They'll fuck you up. Especially if you take a lot of them for a long time. Yeah, you can't do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. They work, though. Holy <laughs> shit. And they're great. Like, I just got the feeling right now. I was like, hey, maybe I should go get some. Nope. Mm -mm. Bad idea. Big back day. 
bro, <laughs> steroids are fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. You take them and like, it changes, it changes everything. People that are like, ah, oh, you know, I don't get roid rage. Excuse me, what was that? A liar. Did you just say you don't get roid rage? That's a bad terminology and I don't like it. I like to call it trembling, <laughs> testosterone, anadrol rage. <laughs> It's a thing. It's a real thing. Uh -huh. I'm going to take 1,500 megs of test, and I'm still going to be cool and calm. Nope. Go back and look at some videos of me in the gym. It's like a switch that only turns on. <laughs> like, I, I would, uh, are you, like, you're taking fucking, you're taking 1,200, 1,500 megs of test a week, fucking 400 megs of trend a week, and dropping an anadrol right before you go into a fucking gym. And you're just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no, there's, my fucking, I'm not altered mentally in any way, shape, or form. Why is that guy like that? Well. Bro, I just saw him take a bite out of the plate. Yeah. He was rubbing his head with the bar, and it, like, there's, it's all fucked up. There's blood there. That guy's kicking the deadlift bar. Yes. Like part animal. You, you become a little bit crazy, hmm. and I like it. Hmm. A lot, but that's just me. It's okay. I think it's I think it's fun. I think it's entertaining. Like you're like, oh uh, yeah, like watch Ronnie Coleman. Like Ronnie Coleman, freak of nature, genetically, naturally, and then f start feeding Ronnie Coleman tons of fucking gear. Let's watch him lift up 800 pounds, fucking like it's nothing, right before shows. Pump workout. Yeah, just fucking pick up the 200 pound dumbbells and start pressing them on the fucking on the flat bench. Yeah, normal. No. A fucking psychopath. Ronnie Coleman gets a hold of you. He might. He'll be, be polite about it. He'll tell you he's going to eat you, and then he'll eat you. Mm. Like yeah, it's just it's. <laughs> we run through a brick fucking wall. But we got on this subject because steroids are bad. They are not good. Mm -mm. But I will say, for anybody that's curious, like they're he was saying they're not bad because you could take them from a doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's called hormone replacement therapy, yep. HRT or TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. Quality stuff. Go see a fucking doctor. That's how you safely take steroids. But at that point, they're not. You're not really taking. I wouldn't categorize categorize it as steroids. You're taking a testosterone, and what you are replacing because you no longer produce it in your body. Yeah. Then you need it because now you're going to help the longevity of your body because under the care of a doctor, he's going to look at your blood work. He's going to say, hello, we need to bring your testosterone levels up to level out your health so that we can make sure that you stay healthy and you don't have problems. So then you go to a doctor regularly, get your blood work looked at regularly. That means you're checking everything going on with your entire body, all of you. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it right. Doctor, go get blood work done. Hello, blood work looks good. Cool. Good job. Hello, Seth, what are you doing? I don't know. Nothing? Nothing. It doesn't look like nothing. This looks like nothing. Your testosterone looks a little high. It's not that high. It's a little high. Yeah, it's <laughs> not that high, Seth. <laughs> so I might be taking an extra CC or three. <laughs> <laughs> But under the care of a doctor is the best way to take it. And there's a ton of uh, uh, HRT, TRT clinics to do so. Um, and again, for I would say once you're about 35 years old, <clears throat> that's whenever I would begin to go get checked. And from there, you listen to the doctor. Do not listen to meatheads. You listen to the doctor. Mm -hmm. The doc, And this is an HRT doctor, not your PCP. This is somebody who is very well versed in hormone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm how the body functions for someone such as yourself that has previously taken steroids or pro-hormones, SARMs, everything. Pay attention. Two cc's of fucking farm-grade test go a long way. It's phenomenal. Maybe a little growth. That's all. Yeah. Whoa. I wouldn't be the same if I loaded back up. Nope. I would like to give one more run to some D-ball. Just to feel it again. Eh. I didn't like D-ball. I loved it. See, that was the thing. I think that was my problem. I liked those ones. 
because they made me big and fluffy and just strong and mm. Mm. all I think about is incline pressing the 160s. It's all I remember. The elbow's getting there. I got the 120s back up. I was pumping them. Nice. Couple clicks. Yeah. Couple clicks, but it was solid. Yeah. Yeah. Little. It was still instability. Like as I continue to move up in weight, there's more instability there. But I figured as long as I can get 15 with the hundreds, yep. strong, mm -hmm. move up. Yep. Yeah, that'll that'll come with the territory there. Yeah. Time. But they're not good times. Cool. Cool. Shaner, do we have any questions for yep. today? Are Ooh. they are they holiday related? They're not holiday related. Not holiday related. I thought we were having holiday questions today. Yeah, I thought we were gonna be like be like if you dressed up as an elf or if your wife dressed up as an elf, would you have sex with her? Yeah. I Good would. question. I would. I would too. Yeah. I'm into that weird shit. I didn't get the memo for the holiday questions. I definitely Oops. make Mrs. Claus suck my boss. Yeah. That's forward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's the fucking holidays. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care if you work so hard all year long. So did I. I'm going to lay my dick right on your face and you're going to suck my balls. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I don't like my questions anymore. <laughs> He's like, fuck. He's like, I thought these were good. <laughs> Let's hear one. I really didn't think they were that good either. Uh, I know. They're the fucking worst. Let's hear one of them. So how about I'll say this before this gets started so make it way better than what Shane's going to say. So uh, Steve Calabrese. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Dan. Steve Calabrese uh, owns Natural Body up in New York, uh, New York City. Steve Calabrese has been in the, uh, the retail supplement shop game for fucking 20 years. Dude is a straight animal. Um, does wonders with our product, Axe and Sledge, up there. Please make sure that you're supporting it. He's take a large stance uh, with all the small business owners across America. Mm -hmm. He gives – if you own a store, please make sure you go follow him, maybe drop him a line, see if he can help you out in any way. He is always, always there to lend advice on how to do things the right way. Yep. Guy is phenomenal, wonderful at everything that he does. Employees clean shops. We go there every year except this year for because of the fucking Rona with uh, – um, he has a huge block party up there, invites all the big stores up, everybody. It's awesome. Great venue. Um, dude's an animal. We, he's a huge Miami Dolphins fan. He's a big Dan Marino fan, too. Yep. So we, had a, we, we did a cameo, those things, with Dan Marino for him. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. It's, it's fucking all really pumped good. <laughs> but, like, like it, was, it was fucking great. But, um, uh, fuck. Uh, God damn it. Where was I going with it? I don't know. I don't know. You're like, this is going to make what Shane's going to say sound better. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that was just it because I w we got to watch it before we set it over to him. I thought it was the coolest thing on the fucking planet. No, with, um, oh, man. Oh, I forgot. Dad moment. I got way too excited about the whole Steve Calabrese and Dan Marino moment. Fuck. It'll probably come back to me. You'll be like, oh, here it is. Here it is. Oh, what were you? God he, damn it. I told you the questions are not going to be good, and you were said this is going to make them seem way worse or something. I don't know. You said the questions weren't going to be that good. I was like, ah. Oh. Nothing. Fuck. <laughs> You're not even high. I know. I think it's because I got fucking way too ripped the other nights. Yeah. Bouncing back. Oh, that Christmas <laughs> party was fucked. Shane was ripped at the Christmas party. I saw that. I blacked out after the uh, cash cube. Yeah. yeah. You looked like it. Yeah. It was intense. Every time I saw you had, like, salami in your mouth. Uh, that is a fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> like the meat, like the lunch meat. Not dick. Oh, not, yeah. Not no, dick. I didn't have the You're lunch. like, oh, fuck, yeah. I did the lunch meat, keep yeah. Eating that. <laughs> <laughs> I did keep eating the meats. Cold cuts. 
Well, oh, what was they going to say about it? I don't know. Were you just getting at the cameo thing's really fucking cool? Mm -mm, no. I thought it was cool. I'd love it. Was it was Oh, I remembered. Yes. Because we did that for Steve, and he started, because he, he was carrying on with Mike. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, he, he was on Twitter, and he was telling us that we have to get on Twitter. Yeah. And oh, apparently, yeah. Apparently, Twitter is like a big deal within the fitness industry right now. And he's like, Seth used to have a Twitter from back in 2013. <laughs> And he and I was like, I was like, fuck, dude, I remember because I just put fucked up shit on there. I just put random shit on Twitter. Like it was 2013. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm I don't gonna know say, what this is. Whoever wants to look at it, yeah, look at it. Fucking here we go. So I think one of my last tweets, my last tweet was, what do you think it was harder? Who do you think it would be harder to have sex with? A great white shark or Captain America? Like which one's harder to have sex with? <laughs> and I was like, oh man, that is something I would say back then. Like, I'm sorry, all fucking tunes <laughs> something out. Something I would say now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to look you up the now. The questions there. And then another thing was about my favorite part about going to the grocery store. Back then, it was, it was the, my second to last tweet was. Uh, I have it. <laughs> yeah. the, the best part about grocery shopping is watching women put, pick out the perfect cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're either going to, like, everybody knows that's my favorite part. They're either going to, like, really grip it up. Yeah. Like, they're going to give it a two-hand, a couple squeezes, or they're just going to go like this. Grab one, put it in there. Fuck it. You can't grab a cucumber like that. Wow. 2013. Yeah. Dude, we got to bring back the Twitter. And then it was, like I said. Do you know how to get in here? Fuck no. Come on. I'll figure it out. I bet I, got, I know your password. You got 2,500 followers on there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Man, I should have took questions that you put from back here. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Just took me a minute. You look young. Yeah, it's because I was. <laughs> look at that. I was on a ton of fucking gear. <laughs> Shit ton of gear. I look way younger. <laughs> Seven years later, fuck you. What are you looking at there? Oh, that's a classic. Let me see it. Look at this classic picture. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, snap. Fucking Palumbo, Singerman. Look at Singerman geared out of his fucking mind. <laughs> I was a thick boy. Twitter is like waves. Like it's like it's big and then like it's not and then everyone gets back on. Twitter's good at like st stirring controversy up. Like you tweet one thing and then. <laughs> Bro, I was off. a fucking thick bitch there. <laughs> thick bitch. <laughs> What else is on there? Um, oh, when we were when we were uploading videos from like when me and you were working together for a bit. Why we got back on Twitter there? Yeah, like let me see your your YouTube videos. Oh, they would upload directly to YouTube and to Twitter. Oh no shit! Yeah, like the link was. Oh. Yeah, way back. Years ago, huh? Many moons. Mm. Well, uh, that was my question was the... I'm pretty big on Twitter, if you guys didn't know. Yeah? No. Oh. That was the thing. Who do you think it'd be harder to have sex with, a great white shark or, or Captain America? Captain America. You think it'd be harder to have sex with Captain America? Yeah. He's he, so nice, though. You He's don't think nice he'd guy. be inviting? No. He's st super strong. Be a tough one. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know how this thing works. I'm out of there. Mm -hmm. I know you got the new phone. New phone. My new phone's still in my fucking backpack. I had it for six weeks. I have mine. I still haven't activated it. Yep. So I figured out how to activate it without going anywhere or talking to anyone. Yeah. Did it myself. Go online. Did it in the phone. Can you do mine? Yep. Can we transfer it? How long did it take to transfer it? A little while. What, what's a little while? Well, like all my shit's up in the cloud, so uh -huh. it took like a full day for shit to move over. What's in the cloud? Everything. God damn it. I pay for like the bigger cloud so I can fit everything and just not fucking worry about it anymore. And it works. I and hate you. 
So like, f- like I turned it on first 15 minutes, you get like your necessities, but then everything slowly loads in. If you need it for like other things, like hold off. Yeah, it's gonna be down. And for yours a day. is a mess because you never remember your fucking passwords for any usernames, and you don't have access to an email account, and then Mm-mm. you can't verify shit. Mm-mm. We fixed that though. I don't know. I think you need to start fresh. Like that. Let's change my number too. <laughs> Probably should. <laughs> I wish I could have like a four-digit number. Something cool. Mm. Well, Shaner. Let's have a question. Just one. Let's have a whack at it. <clears throat> All right. Look at that dick out in the snow. Jay did a that good was job. awesome. It was yeah. a good dick. How was that video? You guys like Strong that? dick. Yeah. All right. Strong like pool. Someone emailed this in. I, re- I don't know if this is good. <laughs> Would you rather chop wood only using a dildo or have someone chop your wood with a dildo? Chop my wood with a dildo? <laughs> What's that mean? That's what I'm saying. Like hit your dick with a dildo, I think. Oh, that's not pleasurable. And I also can't use one to chop wood. I can't use a dildo to cut wood. If a dildo could cut wood, like if that was my only tool, then yeah, I'd still use a dildo. If, I I didn't, if the axes didn't exist. That was a bad question. See, I, I really like the first part of it, oh. I but like I don't like the follow-up. I don't like the comparisons. Mm-mm. There's dildos, nothing to compare. Dildos there. freak me out. Fake dicks, fake dicks and fake vaginas freak me out. Bad question. Who sent that in? Don't tell me. No. I don't like fake dicks and I don't like fake vaginas. They're weird. I could use a real one. Yeah. Get yourself a real one. Get yourself a real vagina or a real penis. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't like the penis you have, get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that works? Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to leave you and get a different anything. dick. <laughs> yeah. Shit. All right, here. I got one. Uh, would you rather see the outcome of every sport event, sporting event before it happens or be able to see future events and change the circumstances of them? Ooh. I feel like this is a good one. I don't know if I want that power. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm watching a game. You're going to know the outcome, but you have no power over the outcome. You just know what the outcome is. Uh-huh. Or... See future events and change the circumstances of them. Change the circumstances or change the outcome? Circumstances. The circumstances are different than the outcome. If I change the circumstances, that's like changing the weather of a football game, correct? Sure. Or maybe like a running back's running, you can't let him score, so you like make sure his shoe's untied so he slips and falls and he doesn't score. Right. Then you know? therefore altering the outcome. Yeah. But what happens if the gentleman can <laughs> overcome the circumstance? That won't happen because well, you're then, changing then I'm it. Changing the outcome, not the circumstances. Is this, is uh, maybe I'm not let's understanding assume, the definition of let's, a, a circumstance and so an outcome. It's like the Jets this weekend. Like someone changed their circumstance to win their first game. Now they don't get the fucking first pick anymore. <laughs> <laughs> fucking so idiots. Awesome. So, so would you change that so they didn't win by three points? So you're going to change the circumstances, which then changes the outcome. What's the definition of a circumstance? You're overthinking this question. (laughs) I don't like it. What are we? A fact or condition connected with or relevant to an event or action. Yeah, or an outcome. It doesn't say outcome. It says event or action. Action. Yeah. That's. What a bad definition. (laughs) What a bad, like. Hold on. No, this would suck. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. What he's asking, just forget it. I don't even know what you asked anymore. Yeah, no. Uh-uh. Fuck. Yeah, you guys. The circumstances know. changes the outcome. They're two different things. I'm taking, uh, I don't, uh, fuck. But if you if you knew the outcome of every sporting event, You'd win a ton of money on Barstool Sportbook. Yeah, I just care about money. I just want to become a rich cocksucker. Let's do that. I'm just going to bet on everything and know what's going to happen and make a ton of money. I'll be, like, known as the best bet maker of all time. A ton of pussy. Sluts. 
Like I wish like Marty McFly would have actually went back with the, the almanac. The, with the almanac. Yeah, I'd rather I wish do that he. One. I wish that there there was another movie of yep. him doing that. Yep. Be sick. Yeah, I definitely have gold chains. Tons of money, but did good. Did mostly good. A little bit of bad shit with it. No, I do a ton of blow, and I'd be a complete degenerate. Mm. Be in Vegas <clears throat> all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'd never lose, except everything that like loves me because I'm such a degenerate. Yeah. <laughs> Degens. Fuck. Uh, is that all you got, Shane? That's all I got. That's all I got. I went. I went way too far. I made think. Had to think way too far and be a complete jerk off. <laughs> well, it's good times. Yep. Right, everybody, <laughs> thanks for listening. Have a great day. Don't forget, low jobs, great Christmas gifts. Good job. See you later this week. Have a Merry Christmas. Peace day. out. Bye. Bye.